I'm Kobe Hartman. Kensler are now joining me on the desk for this matchup between the European LCS and the GPL squad, of course, specifically. Coming in from Vietnam, these guys have fought hard to get here. I know. I mean, this is their third consecutive All-Star event. Basically, they've been at All-Stars for an ex incredibly long time, and they've shown it in the 1v1s, you know, had some success there. We'll see if they can translate it onto Summoner's Rift, though. Definitely have a challenge in front of them here. Well, let's take a chance now to look at the starting lineups, beginning with the EU All-Stars from Team Ice. Coming into the top lane, it's Soaz, Jungle, Yankos, Mid, X, Peke, AD, Carry, Reckless, and Support, Mithy. Well, they got a lot of support from, uh, you know, the Peke chants all throughout the crowd. We'll see whether the representatives of the GPL from Team Fire can garner a bit of support in this game. In the top lane, it's QTV. In the jungle is Levi. In the mid lane is Optimus. AD Carry Celebrity with support Ron OP. And the you know first thing about their loss yesterday to me that stood out were kind of the losing lanes and you know Shen up in the top side where everybody that's been really tryharding has been yeah Poppy uh, Nautilus or Maokai up there to abuse Courage of the Colossus and yeah Shen can use it but uh, I I would like to see GPL just go for super strong winning lanes right out of the gate and that really does open your jungler up that analyst asked they were talking about Levi so maybe you can make some happen and that was one of our biggest thoughts during IWCA was that QTV while of course everybody's going to be comfortable on the Maokai, on the tanks. He just seemed like one step behind a lot of the other top laners when it came to the, his decision making on engages, how he was playing the lane and when he was using the teleport. So that's what I want to see the GPL squad kind of shore up. And of course, Soaz similarly having a rough day yesterday, playing well in the laning phase, but getting caught out time and time again. So I'm going to be curious to see where these bands go if the top lane is the center of attention, but it's going to be all in the mid lane for yeah. the Optimus X Peke matchup. I mean, maybe they first pick in Poppy this time around, because Poppy is queen up there with Kurt. Ah, oh, there it yeah, is. There right it is. Right, board. right, band off the board. <laughs> Caster Curse. One pick that we haven't really seen taken away, but is now in this game, is Elise. We've seen some presence on Lee Sin coming out of the jungle, but uh, you know this is the first time we're really seeing the Elise bands yeah. here at uh, All Star. So pressure on Levi. Yeah, I mean Elise bands are are definitely target bands or or a throwaway band because there are so many good junglers right now. Uh, and she's not even at the top of the list, so definitely a lot of options still left open. I'm sad to see Lee Sin off the table because that was one of Yankos' you know, best performing champions. This is a big uh, moment, though, right because now. if the GPL leave Rek'Sai available and one mid laner, the EU LCS can only really pick one of them and the other goes over. So either they leave two strong mid laners up and Rek'Sai and they take a two for one trade, or they just kind of outplay themselves and give the ULCS one strong pick and can't really answer with it. Seconds away from that final ban. EU must be pretty confident in their first pick. You can see Yanko smiling on the screen. It will be Rangar taken away. Interestingly enough, Rainover showing the power of that champion yesterday. So uh, Le LeBlanc uh, is still up here. You know, talking about power, one of the most powerful assassins after the Rewa. All right, there we go. No hesitation. And I'm assuming that's going to go to Peke. But there's three big picks that we look at. Rek'Sai, Nautilus and Rise. The Rise doesn't have to be rushed here, so the, the GPL squad could look to pick up those three. We have seen a bunch of Graves, but on the IWCA, Rek'Sai really was queen out of the jungle when you weren't looking for those, you know, trades all the way through. We've seen a little bit more action out of junglers here at All-Star. Something Mithy talked about, Rek'Sai, much better in environments where teams aren't as unified. You get the free brush check, the free tremor sense, that reliable, pseudo-free vision, making it much easier to make decisions as a team, but Levi, he's not about that life. He <laughs> wants to do the damage. Yep, not going to be a Courage of the Colossus there for Graves. He'll bring the damage all right. And they'll just tank that Nautilus up to the top line to provide that front line. And at this point, that's kind of the easy way out for QTV. You're given that pick while the Poppy isn't available. So now, if Soaz wants to try and play a laning game, perhaps he'll look to just push the Nautilus back and stop him from ever getting tanky enough, but that's a risky strat. And you know what? Something that has emerged in the last couple of months that's super strong at shoving in is the, the Nasus with Emacs, uh, <laughs> a different flavor up there for the top lane rather than trying to get a bunch of stacks. One of my favorites is the AP Shaco, but generally you want to play that against you know more squishy lineups and already looking at the Nautilus probably won't be the case. Yanko's looking to mount up here though. And of course, playing with our hearts, he spoke briefly yesterday, I believe, off broadcast back. He's like, I think Twitch is really good in the jungle. We might get a chance to play him <laughs> in the jungle, hovering over it for as long as possible just to tease us. 
will, of course, be the Hecker in, in the end, or at least for now, there are still a few seconds left here. If he does end up locking this in, this is more Jankos trying to be a playmaker, more so than Rek'Sai. Of course, you can make plays on Rek'Sai, but Jankos is a little bit more of the mentality of, hey, let me get myself ahead, and then I'll get the rest of you ahead along with me. So looking for a little bit more damage, a little bit more engage coming out here, giving them that tool with the Onslaught of Shadows. A lot of wombo comp potential. Now we have to wonder, Reckless and Mithy struggled a little bit yesterday, had a strong early lane, but what are they going to pick up here? Yeah, I mean, uh, they are hovering over the Caitlyn, which is extremely powerful right now, because we talk about winning lanes and wanting to work off of early pressure, and that definitely would do a lot towards that area of the map. I have to say, though, one of the you know concerns I had for the GPL was, was their AD carry. Uh, and especially since now he's facing LeBlanc, Hecarim, and Kennen, uh, a lot of dive <laughs> towards the back line, so... It uh, looks like if he picks something low mobility like Ash or Jin again, and he could be the target. The Jenna would have been a good option. I always like Jenna counterpicking Kennen, one of those really old counterpicks. Uh, that has been there over the years, but Alistar technically can headbutt him out as well. And this is starting to look like a very tanky lineup for the GPL, utilizing multiple instances of Courage of the Colossus. And there is always the risk with this style where you've got a LeBlanc, you've got a less tanky top lane champion and a jungler that wants to snowball. If that doesn't start to happen in those roles all at the same time, it can become a game where the GPL outlasts if they can bring some later game damage from their mid lane. I think that is key. I think that's a good point because Graves is, is one of those outlasting junglers, right? He's not going to have the super high impact ganks early on. Uh, is definitely looking to farm and clear out and try and get those levels stacked up, whereas Hecarim has the options. You know, I generally will always uh, consider Hecarim wanting to do a full clear for the first one uh, with the blue buff because you really want to make the most of your first blue buff. Very mana intensive jungler, but he has options, especially with Ghost. You can go for early ganks if they're really ripe and they're really presenting themselves. Of course, Ice really taking their time on this final rotation. Not sure what they want to grab. We have to remember Zyra up and available. Powerhouse in the early lane. Ooh. You don't oh, play with my it, heart. Is it? It's locked. It's locked. Oh, yeah. It's what we want. Reckless <laughs> made his name in season three playing Vayne, and we get to see it at All Star. And I've been hearing a lot of talk about how Reckless, you know, after the first showing there for Team Ice, really buckled down and he was very intense about practicing a bunch of 1v1s you know getting ready for today and try trying very hard i mean all the teams actually have come to these uh regional games with a very try hard mentality i'm so excited to see this man because he has been a menace in solo queue uh, and he's going to have the Janna to try and help him through that uh, lane phase. We saw one Vayne go completely off in IWCA. Just go to like 11 and 0, two <laughs> shot everybody. No but, way of standing up. But we do have to remember that that Vayne did get three kills in yeah. succession yeah, in the first was... 10 minutes of the game. So I don't know if it's going to be the same story. Stress, I want to see it too, the... but. <laughs> it, it's so vulnerable early on. It's a possibility because Hecram can do that classic red buff Krugs into two and a half minute gank. Mm -hmm. uh, we shall see though, what's gonna be the mid laner? Well, there's the late game damage and the wombo combo. This is a strong team fight setup that's coming out of the GPL. If somebody's out of position, the arrow comes through, Alistair goes in or the Nautilus and brings the ball and suddenly everybody's lost their health. Yeah, Both I mean teams. Looking like they have a lot of power here. The Wombo combo you talk about, I think most terrifying for Reckless here is that death charge from Nautilus. The unavoidable, undodgeable <laughs> yeah. CC. Yes, Nautilus can't take Vayne out of his own, but he hits that Vayne once, locks her down once, and she's going to get popped like it's nothing. Definitely was... true. I mean, all these guys are also going to have to watch out for that Ash arrow. So there, there's a chain of events that can go in GPL's favor. This EU team, though, looks like it's very good at scattering, right? LeBron can create a lot of chaos. Zenit, uh, Kennen can control a huge zone. And that allows Reckless to make use of repeat invisibility tumbles. This is the most ridiculous team out of Europe. They have four roles and four champions that are just wanting to carry at all times. This is a race. Who can carry Any... hardest? <laughs> I mean, Peke showed it to us yesterday. Maybe Peke's going to be the carry again, but Reckless is clearly like, it's my turn. You had your <laughs> chance on Ara yesterday. We didn't do it. We didn't pull out the win. Not going to get a chance today. Maybe he will. LeBlanc, pretty good champion to do it on. But of course, this is your chance. Head on over to Twitter. Vote at LOE Sports. Hashtag Ice Win. If you think the Vayne can come out on top or hashtag Fire Win, I think the GPL can close this one out with confidence. Whew, I'm, I'm excited to see the Vayne. Been a long time since we've seen Reckless on Vayne. 
Of course, the changes recently made it that, uh, you know, Vayne Janna is exceptionally strong once you get past the very early points in the game, so I'm She excited. did get nerfed on 624. Does that mean she's OP on 623? <laughs> normally. Normally, that's what it means. <laughs> it's time, ladies and gentlemen. Third match of the day, EU versus the GPL. Team Ice already well on the way out looking for some early plays. And to focus more on this bottom lane, this is a, a matchup that specifically I asked Mithy about during IWCA, about Vayne into Alistair, because I was thinking, well, you're just gonna get Q-flashed, surely. And he said, well, with the changes to Alistair, you don't have to walk past the champion, so unless you can flash all the way past them, it's impossible to headbutt and punish them, so you end up the other side of Vayne in between two people. And with the Janna, any kind of crowd control to deny the Alistair the way in makes it almost impossible for him to engage reliably. So this is why this vain Janna has been picked into the Alistair. Yeah, and there's so much potential for outplay uh, with the vein, And you always like to highlight these big you know, 1v2 and 1v3 even sometimes possible plays. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> All right. He it. doesn't even need it, ladies that's, and gentlemen. He's that gimmick. confident. <laughs> And the no. crowd cheers for Peke. By the way, cheers or cheers? Uh, D is for dance, <laughs> stress. It, it's definitely cheers. Uh, and this time he's not running teleport, the uh, the classic Peke. He's bringing the ignite for the kill in lane. You see this brand. I mean, there's just. There we go. If you're watching from home, you cannot appreciate the, the sheer magnitude of, of Peke fans in the crowd right now. Spanish loyalty at its finest. See now Team Ice starting. Very standard blue buff early for the Hecarim. Similar story for Graves on the bottom side. Which means we're not seeing the Red Frogs 2 minute 30 gank that we were looking for. Kobe maybe getting them ahead, but we'll see how they do in lane on their own. Yeah, I mean, that has been the most talked about uh, strategy after the changes. It's become that everybody kind of expects it on the bottom side nowadays. And like I said, you know, using the first blue buff to a maximum effect for Hecarim, Full clear is not a bad option. This, like, this is a very uh, very high percentage chance of success. Uh, if you just power clear the entire jungle, then you come out with your level four and go for uh, the ganks that way. And you can see the punish already coming through. Mithy puts the shield on Reckless. Ooh. Reckless goes forward to Celebrity because with Rono Peony being level one, he cannot even combo on towards him. Like Even with a Q flash, there's nothing more to be done in this setting, so. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> Flash replay! Oh, he dodged oh, everything. This, that Nothing was, hit him. That was foreshadowing. I mean, he's setting up the, the mind game flashes into a brush to juke people <laughs> out. You know, once you get close to the wall and you know, flashing backwards into the brush instead. We saw it at IWCA. Uh -huh. We'll see it here now in ASE as well. I think it's getting a little cheeky. Going into the jungle here, spotting out Levi. I like it. Peke calling his shots. And actually, yeah, you talk about the uh, circle around to the top for Hecarim here. UTV's yeah, he pushed up. Not gonna connect. Oh, he got it. He wants to get it. It should be first blood, but QTV gets a big shield here. Graves on the way up. It's too little, too late. Yanko's picking up first blood for Team Ice. And yesterday we we're looking for some big early moves from Yanko's. Didn't quite come through with them. But here we go. Talk about the mind games. Oh, everybody's expecting the red into Krug's <laughs> early gank. Ha! Do it on blue side, and he is rewarded. Plus, since Graves cleared top, uh, bottom to top, he can't punish and go to steal away the red side jungle. He they, here, though. They can't put a so no, in, uh, That's a big wave, and that's going to be one dead cannon. QTV traded back. Just a little too low on the health. Stuck around while the TP was channeling and couldn't dodge out the hook. So as giving Yankos the way out there. Peke would go and aggressive in the middle lane. Optimus has already burned through all of his mana already. And Soaz is one of those guys that has such a long oh, history no. of escaping oh, no. gangs on the top side. No, Soaz. And repeat. Levi going in, oh. red buff down. <laughs> Nautilus hook, are they gonna? Nope, backing off. Meanwhile, the rest of the lanes playing suspended though. That was a great tornado for Mithy. Definitely too, you expect that for a top tier player. Rado oh. Pito goes in with the flash. Look at it, he can't clear the distance enough. He's not gonna be able to go forward. Reckless still trading back, and it's not gonna be much in the end, but so close to the potential knock under the tower. Peke though has now overstayed his welcome in the mid lane. Levy procking the red buff, Peke set to fall. Great patience there, and they punish him as soon as he goes in for the distortion. One of the other changes, the only kind of downside to the new LeBlanc is you don't have that old pass where you go invisible and then you have to make him guess which one and uh, have a higher chance of escaping. They do punish him there, kill Peke, and he doesn't have teleport, like we said, to get back. There was some other guesswork going on there by Levi and Optimus. 
Where's the flash? When's he gonna flash? <laughs> How's he gonna flash? <laughs> Ah, uh, basically. Through. Now they can they're think never you saved gonna it. Know. They're never going to know. They're just going to think he <laughs> saved it for some reason. Exactly. They're like, oh, you know, he was resigned to his death, so he saved it for next time. Won't get repeat gank now. <laughs> so patient. Peke, how does he do it? It actually pays off. Wow. Repeat gank's not coming. Talking about repeat ganks, though, uh, QTV, again the focus. Oh. Nankos may try to delay uh, the back here. I mean, if I were QTV, I would have called his bluff and just stood there. Because if Yankos goes in... I mean, uh, there's no help going to arrive for him here. So QTV is... Orianna's on the minion. way up. Orianna's on the way up. Off is only level 5, though. QTV going to have to try some fancy footwork. In goes the Hecarim. Challenging spike drops. Soaz grabs another one. Too little too late for the mid laner. Not going to make it in time. I, I just look at that and like, okay, it's a little too late for QDB to stay alive on his own, but what was Yankos going to do? Go under the turret with no minions around to tank and so as not there for the rest of the damage? I think QTB with staggering blows or hook his shield may very well have stayed alive in that situation and dead Yankos, or he just keeps recalling out uh, Yankos can't stop him. Uh, look, things are pretty rough, <laughs> but... Uh, I just feel like QDB... I, like like I feel like you're, taking you're taking you're, that <laughs> optimistic top laner approach, and I like it. Uh, but <laughs> it's not going to work out for him, and Yankos not playing around today. Uh, pretty hard with that top lane camp, and he'll be up to a pretty quick Trinity Force as well. Generally, you'll get the red smite just for the, you know, the combat power there, and then switch over right away to the Trinity Force build. Uh, and once you get that, it's off to the races. Of course, interestingly enough, bottom lane going in the favor of Team Ice. Reckless kind of commanding these trades in so many ways. Ron OP waiting, looking for an attempt to all in, but not finding it yet. You can see 57 to 52 farm. Ash will even it up, but Vayne kind of expect her to fall behind so much in these early games. Oh, oh, oh. In the oh. mid lane, setting it up chain. with the chain. Not going to get it. Flash out from Optimus. We were actually having... Uh, oh, never mind. Let's we'll oh. wait for this counter jungler <laughs> to go off first. Okay, Kobe, I don't think they're going to kill each other yet. Uh-huh. But it's over the small raptors. So as fighting over the creep wave is not always seems like to contest. Does burn his ult in the end. Oh, leave. Uh, Levi gets it. He, he wins. He wins the There's trade the, in the, the, golf the, the golf clap. The golf clap. Right. Well it's done. Well done. Victories. Got the large chicken. Yankos letting us know. He's proud of that moment. I mean, Levi is doing what, you know, the Graves uh, path there. He's up a level on the Hecarim. So, uh, you know, not falling too far behind. Did have the successful gank mid as well. So not too shabby there for him. Now I'm interested to see whether Peke uses his clone. We saw this earlier out from Maple that he used the second part of the ultimate elsewhere on the map to fake a roam while he was going over for blue buff, which, you know, is something that I think we're going to start seeing a little bit more out of LeBlanc players, just having people guess where you are when you drop out of the lane. But this time, not the case. Interesting mechanics that I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more LeBlanc players use. Keep our eyes on it. Of course, Optimus, no stranger to the LeBlanc, however, did bust it out to qualify for this tournament. So. We have to think that you know he may know how these combos are going to play out, that he may be able to outplay here in some of these trades. And goes with that red timer, goes in for the red steel. Meanwhile, you see on the mini map the little bit of backup there that Levi was going to give to uh, Optimus when he was going to fight Peke in the river. But because of that, uh, not going to be anywhere near the top side to protect his red. Yankos gets it and gets out. This is going to be from Yankos. Peke, though, still getting aggressive. Ooh, Ooh not going to get it. That K does make it out in the end. Collateral damage, not enough. NT, NT. Good try there for uh, for Levi, but not going to catch Peke this time around. Yeah, Sombrero not really effective against LeBlanc. One of the more difficult champions to lock down. Uh, despite adding that extra like second that she has to stick around before she can take the W back, still uh, <laughs> well before the time that uh, Optimus ult would have closed. So I'm interested to see how Optimus can kind of hold on in this middle lane and if they can keep up with Peke when he starts roaming around the map. Yeah, Orion, uh, not too shabby towards the late game, does scale very well. So uh, Optimus doing just fine at the moment. We shall see though, because I'm waiting for some bottom lane action. Ash has hit level 6. The CC available to this GPL bottom lane is really, really uh, good setup for something like a top lane teleport. You know, Nautilus is very high impact as soon as he's going down. And Optimus actually with the roam. Something in mind as well. Maybe look for the bottom lane play, but he gets caught in transit. And Optimus now sets a fall. Peke going to grab one, but the TPs are here. Nautilus not overstaying his welcome. Instantly makes his way out. Pretty dangerous roam there, and it uh, looks like Team Fire going to get chased out of the jungle here altogether. Now they have numbers on the bottom side of the map. Uh, let's see if they actually establish any more control. Kobe, you asked for a bot lane play. Optimus was on the same page. Uh, yeah, okay. Team Ice, <laughs> not going to have it. You're leaving the vein alone. 
And it looks like it's working out well so far. Of course, fell behind for a little bit there, but is now evened up in the CS department. Evened up, and you know, we've been hearing so much about Vayne in solo queue. You get yourself the BF sword, then go attack speed item, you know, a lot of that upfront damage on those first couple of hits. I want to see how that actually ends up playing out now for Reckless. We've seen it a handful of times in competitive, and it really does take the game over if you don't put the Vayne behind significantly. So you are in a decent position for that. Wax Peke just going to double dash on out of that. Not accepting the risk of the depth charge. Alt traded for Alt, but looks like it's in favor of Peke here. Yeah, definitely in favor of uh, Team Mike right there, I think, because of the low cooldown. Plus, because now there's a Flash Cannon Ultimate available with no answer from QTV. They don't have that extra CC from the Nautilus. And uh, as we said, you know, Soaz is going to be one of the big divers towards the back line for Team Ice, especially once that Proto Belt does get completed. Trying to get to that pretty quickly here. Misses the Shuriken on the trade, so not able to lock up QTV, but still pressuring out here. You can see the massive CS differential between these two players, and it's only going to get harder for QTV as they move forward. Surely, though, the, the decision making now is you're talking about the depth charge. I, I completely agree with, with this as an option not to stop Soas. It's difficult for him to decide because if Vayne starts snowballing, if Kennen starts snowballing, if LeBlanc starts snowballing, one of these champions, you can only pick one of the three. Who are you going to depth charge? Going to wish you had it, you know, so that you <laughs> at least stick to use it on somebody. But 50% uh, left on the cooldown, and I think they're going to give up some ground here. Yanko's going in for that deep vision coverage, combining with Mithy for the Blast Plant escape. Making their way out. Mithy making his way back into the bottom lane to keep Reckless safe and healthy as Ron, OP, and Celebrity back out. But Xpeka and Yankos are back in the mid lane. Maybe looking for a little bit of play, but Graves is waiting in the wings. He gets spotted out and immediately Peke retreats. Speaking yeah. of Mithy, uh, we can commend him for a better performance today than, <laughs> than yesterday, losing in the 1v1 and having a really rough game on the Zyra. So I know he took that hard. I wonder whether he was along with Reckless try harding the entire time. Yeah, I mean, just look at the vision control as well. One of the big criticisms for Team Ice yesterday was the team play. You know, they talked about themselves. Uh, Mithy was kind of disappointed in their late game strategy. Uh, all the different players had different ideas for, you know, what the team plan was and it didn't really come together. This time around, they have a lot more information to work with, uh, and we'll see if they can actually make that work on the bottom side, because so many of those wards have been set up for this bottom play that we keep on hyping up <laughs> or waiting to uh, bring to fruition. And of course, so as now continuing to pressure on the top side, but you mentioned it, it's maybe hard to have that team play with so many leadership uh, you know, members of the team. Peke, leading Origin, so often subbed in as AD carry because of his ability to shot call. Mithy, big caller coming in for G2, maybe butting heads on the authority level, but it looks much cleaner than that. We've got a, a kind of uncharacteristic thing happening on the left with the rift right now. Soez is so far ahead, he's nearly at first turret blood, and he's pushing up with the next wave. Very rare that it's a turret other than bot lane that gets Ooh. taken down. Oh, Yanko, awesome. surprise Optimus, not at all the party he wanted, just wants to lay down a ward, and he'll get the ward, but I don't know if he's going to be able to escape here. Running along the wall, but Levy there to back him up. Does Yanko. save his flash still? No! Oh. will make him blow it. Ooh. Great patience coming in from Optimus at the end there, but Ron OP caught between a rock and a hard place, knocked down into the wall, burn the unbreakable. Reckless hungry for more, not gonna get anything else out of Rex. Peke, Peke. Oh, he wants a party, but he's not gonna get what he wants, not gonna be able to jump out at all as Levy grabs that one. Great combo there from Team Fire, but remember, they still already sent Optimus back to base, so not much you know chase potential there, and they are gonna be able to at least defend their blue buff there after punishing Xpeke. And we were talking about the top tower, we were talking about how this bottom lane action was playing out as well. That tower did go down in favor for the European All-Stars, so they do extend their gold lead a little bit more. But, you know, Peke going that aggressive over the wall, perhaps a, a bit of a death wish for him. Not really respecting Celebrity's arrow that eventually comes out. Peke just tries to go aggressive and point blank eats the arrow up. Yeah, uh, good combo. This is a great, you know, flash play there from Ron OP. Flash combo, boom, sets it up for the arrow. Not able to get out of that stun. And 100% uh, to, or maybe it was that about 70% to zero uh, for the execution there. But we saw Peke walking back and forth. Not sure if he wanted to stay there. Caught out now, but they're in trouble. No unbreakable will available for Ron OP quite yeah. yet. Reckless wants it. Oh, it the that was a sick play. Reckless taking down Ron OP. Moving in on Celebrity, and this man is hungry for blood. He's not done yet. Moving forward, but in goes Celebrity. Oh, oh, oh. 50 has he overstayed his welcome. So as so on the way as well. Celebrity wants one more, but the Nautilus is here too. Death Charge goes down, but Mithy is going to stay up as Soaz backs off.
Exciting play there. We talk about, oh yeah, the outplay potential from Vayne, you know, and buffering that Condemn for the headbutts. He had that perfectly and does get the kill, but then, you know, overestimating their 2v1 ability against Celebrity does go down in the process. So as can clean everything up, though. Yeah, and this is how it started. We're looking just at that Condemn again. Look at the damage that comes out from the Vayne already. Yeah, and what you can do uh, is just keep spamming the Condemn while he's just out of range and then canceling it into an auto, Ooh. then continue spamming it so that when he does finally cast the headbutt, it automatically will go off uh, and he is able to knock him back. But then Celebrity with the activated Ash Q right there takes him out and chases him with a flash. And it looks like Reckless wasn't quite expecting the flash to come out of Celebrity because Reckless still had his, so he could have extended a little bit more of that distance and chose not to, wasn't quite in, you know, a range to reaction flash since he was so low. So Reckless ends up dying, keeps the flash, but eventually, you know, the, t the top laners came in with the teleports and it ended up being cleaned up. At the end of the day, just that one for one back and forth trade, or two for one rather, trade back and forth. Dragon now set to fall as Pekka taking a lot of tower damage here. Over there to back him up and Mount Drake looks to be going over in the favor of Team Fire. And GPL. Falling behind in gold, but taking these objectives, taking control on the back end of that play. And that was one of the characteristics that the wildcard teams a lot in IWCA would fall prey to. Was oh, 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 he oh, Peke! Oh, Peke! Overstays as well. Oh. He's going to get the fancy footwork out. Yeah, they were trying to set up a play where they dive mid lane, but if Peke can't push him into the turret, then Yankos and everyone sitting behind this turret. Oh, oh, oh they want it. Here goes in, knocked back. Reckless wants another kill. Are they going to give it to him? The delayed trigger on the mid lane dive play we're talking about. <laughs> and Peke with the long con on the bait there. Sacrifices most of his health to draw Optimus out from the turret. I like oh, the positivity. The oh, yeah. oh. oh. Not gonna connect. Peke even managed to avoid dying to, to Levi's collateral damage as well. That came straight through at the end as well. So Peke seems to be, uh, you know, the man on a mission escaping in this game. Taking a page out of Bjergsen's book from yesterday. And remember, you know, what, let's take a look at the compositions and what this EU victory would look like since they are winning right now. They're going to be about that team fight where they can try and flank around, you know, get the dive with uh, all the uh, spread out damage that they can have with the four damage dealers we set up. Uh, trying to attack from multiple directions, whereas uh, GPL, they want a solid team fight with the Nautilus and Alistar right in front of them uh, to try and deny exactly that. And that's really going to have to come from their vision control. Uh, forcing Europe to come into areas where they haven't got wards available and suddenly outcomes are on OP from the darkness. It's going to be very rare that they're going to just be able to walk towards Europe and oh, kill them in the fight. flash over the wall. He's set to pop. Optimus grabs a kill in the mid lane. Another play being set up oh, here, Ron OP. So not going to get knocked back to the team. Is going to make his way out. The stun on the auto is going to get it. Knocks it back. Levy looking to put down the damage. There is the alt. Can he escape? That's a lot of damage. Proto Belt is He's not up. Moving out. Wants to make it to safety. So off with the fancy footwork. Looks is like he he's going to get out of this one. The cow's coming back. Stun will be up soon. Got Ron OP. Oh. A little bit more blood. Oh. Oh. For the bloodthirsty support. Nice dunk. And actually, back to back plays set up there for the GPL. They're clawing their way back into this one. Yeah, they're getting the picks. They're just, you know, 2v1ing as much as they can. The problem is, Mithy and Reckless have been on the bottom side, getting another turret that down for the European LCS All Stars. And I mean, eventually that's going to grind down the GPL if they don't really uh, assess this situation and shut Reckless out because he's quietly farming himself up on kills, on CS, and he's becoming very strong. Almost a 20 CS oh, lead. Optimus. Oh, Optimus is just going to get popped. Reckless picks up another kill, and this is kind of what you talked about, Kobe. There are so many damage threats up and available on this team if you ignore even one coming out of nowhere. And exactly like he was talking about, towers going down open up more space for Europe to work with and try and get those picks. It's Peke playing with fate a little bit there. Teasing the Nautilus, baiting out the hook. Now gonna pick up this blue buff as well. Europe absolutely in control of this game. You talked about needing to find windows and visions, but Europe have been so diligent this game about laying down the necessary vision. Definitely true. We'll see if uh, you know Team Fire can use the Ash Arrow and set up one of those more controlled team fights that we're talking about. But uh, as of right now, Team Ice doing a good job of having that scattered gameplay as well. One tower that remains that is critical for the GPL squad is that mid outer tower. Normally, it's fairly difficult to break down. You'd see Optimus go to the mid lane, wave clear it. 
they've just got to be careful that Jankos doesn't come around the side. If somebody from the GPL is in a side lane out of position and isn't able to react in time, if that Orianna dies, that tower is going, and LeBlanc suddenly gets so much more freedom in the jungle like you were talking about, Kobe. Yeah, the towers are kind of snowballing, because even though GPL haven't taken a single tower yet, they do have that Mountain Drake, and they could collect a lot of gold pretty quickly if they get the momentum, if they get another one of those picks. The only problem is they got a couple picks, weren't able to turn any of that into any objectives because Team I, the European squad, they are doing a good job of controlling those minions. Not just that, but also controlling pretty much everything across the map. 34.9k to 31 point through. Soaz with a massive CS lead in addition to that now completed Zonya's Hourglass. And that's so key because suddenly the depth charge no longer a real option for QTV to put on Soaz to force him out of the fight because as long as Soaz has Flash, Flash Proto Belt, he's already in. Zonya's the depth charge and the damage is down. And the threats are just stacking up. Not only is the Zonya's done, but Reckless has his infinity oh, end. And Oxum to the wall, but the Graves is coming. Ooh. Is there enough damage? Minty may try to disengage the fight. They're fighting him one at a time. They ignore the Nautilus. They turn for the Graves and they're going to grab him. Reckless looking for the montage moment here, but is going to have to back off. Infinity edge static shield. Oh, this is not enough. Shields. <laughs> going for more, Kobe. Does get the ultimate out of Alistar, but uh, that will take a long time to chop him down. And it's going to be push the bottom lane, move to the mid lane, because Optimus is in the top lane, trying to get top tower. Edpa. Oh, oh they're going to repeat. Oh, they got the arrow. Walk him up under the tower. Misty with a nice disengage. Third proc. Yeah, QTV had to clear out the minions there. Oh, 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 static ship, boys. Popping him up, knocking him down, and Alistair just delivers himself to the vein buffet. Yeah, I believe that was like the third proc on the True Silver plus a crit. Plus, I, that's just, that was everything. That's the, that's the vein burst we're talking about. Just two items, all he needs, running straight through the bottom lane now. And they take the, the bot inner, they're pushing up to the inhibitor tower. Look, the damage is so significant. Yankos has gone damage build as well. This is back, but I don't know if he's going to get here in time. They're breaking they go for the inhibitor as well. Optimus finally returns to the base. QTV in a little frisky, looking for the gank, but Reckless is untouched. An inhibitor's gonna drop in favor of EU. And they're just gonna make a hasty retreat. They keep up the pressure. Now they're timing their back with this extra Infernal Drake. That's gonna add to this four damage dealing, <laughs> uh, four damage build squad that they have, and just it's gonna be out of control here. They'll, they can continue to split up the map as well and poke at GPL from different sides. Europe just got a ridiculous amount of gold in the last two minutes. They took three towers, a handful of kills. Now they've picked up a dragon to kind of augment this power already. Oh, Peke. Peke. Oh, Die hard, maybe not, no. Celebrity gonna grab the kill in the end. We had Hot Potato with Peke there. <laughs> Alistar passed over to Nautilus into the Ash for the last kill. Depth Charge comes out, but does not connect. QGB gets the cooldown back, and Peke does drop. 1-4-1 one one the scoreline for X Peke, but it doesn't matter this time around. Yankos 2-0-4, and four, setting the pace for the team in the early game. And Reckless and Saw is more than happy to keep it going. Oh, uh, whips the ball. Yankos forced to ult to get himself away. The turret does go down, so a little bit of a, a, a recovery of sorts for GPL. They still have a long road back, though. This is so heavily EU favored. Yeah, definitely necessary for uh, EU to see that mid turret. Uh, they want to keep it split, split up, like we talked about. Bane up on the top side, split pushing. Reckless is feeling very confident <laughs> uh, in his ability to fight off any attackers in that side. And so as, of course, with the teleport down bottom, uh, completing their spread strategy. And Mithy's ready. He's ready for the long range supporting on Jana. He's got redemption. Doesn't even matter if he throws himself out first to die. It's the name of the uh, game. It feels like the perfect item <laughs> given his performance yesterday. Ouch. Meanwhile, zero deaths, <laughs> 007 here. I know. Secret agent Mithy, you guys are just <laughs> holding yesterday. You're living in the past. It's true. Uh, all his troubles were so far. I am well reckless now coming in has 36% of his team's damage this game. The man solo killing anyone and everyone he finds. And Mithy, of course, there to back him up. He can throw shade for yesterday, but today <laughs> you, guys, you guys are right. He is absolutely crushing it. And now they're gonna look to crush Levy, although it's not gonna be so easy. Now looking for the disengage, and the siege just continues. On the backside, Soaz is here. Xpeke is trying to keep out Optimus. Down goes the Rizal, and in goes Soaz. Three almost locked up. Levy overstays for just a little bit, but will make it out in the end. QTV. 
caught between enemy lines, does not want to go any further. And Reckless, unconcerned with the tower as Mythy tanks it out flawlessly. QTV, the true silver bolts are just too much damage. <laughs> Mythy keeps the ball rolling and Reckless grabs yet another one. Yeah, even with Jane, uh, Vayne chunking away on him, takes a while to go down, but great flank there from Europe and they're able to close this one. Push in another inhibitor turret. Pushing down another. This is going to be a second inhib of the game. Reckless just tallied up his 600th kill. So, uh, you know, impressive game. Another for round of golf There you go. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. I'm being told it was 300th kill. 300th kill. I think that was in 2016. I was just. What? Wait, what did you say? 300 is very different from 600. All right, we'll figure it out later because this is a time for action, as made clear by EU going absolutely ham in this fight. And then, as mentioned, press. There it is. So, as dodging out the ultimate with the use of that Zanya's. And now, I mean, what options are left here for the side of the GPL? What what can they do to come back in the game where there's so many strong members? On the I'm a big fan of everybody group up, try and nail one person with the Ash Arrow, and just get your five-man roaming squad. Maybe you can, uh, you know, start picking people off. But it's a definitely a Hail Mary attempt at the moment for GPL. I've had to clarify. Got it. Nice. I've nice. got the right, actual right. right. for us. 300th kill of 2016. Nice. nice. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Synergy. <laughs> Moving forward, Reckless looking for his 301st kill. Maybe hoping to take that away. Minty hungry for a little bit of blood here, but Fire are backing off. They are grouped though. Maybe this is their hail bearing moment. The arrow is available. The shockwave up and available as well. Ice prowling around the jungle, not looking to give an opportunity to fire. Yeah, the minions doing a lot of work on the GPL base as well. They're gonna need to dedicate someone to stand back and clear those out, unless they lose their <laughs> other one. Oh no, the Baron's gonna have to be forfeit. Not what they wanted. Reckless just does so much damage, and Yanko's more than happy to tank it out there as they pick up the Baron. Colonel Drake backing them up as well. A 11k gold lead. Make it nigh impossible for Fire to come back, but they have the tools. This game feels like the opposite game to yesterday, where, you know, everybody we were looking at being like, okay, these guys are probably going to be the primary carries. We're not sure how Peke is going to do. It feels like complete opposite land, uh, which is good for the European fans. You were right. You were just a day early, I think is what we wanted. <laughs> the analyst test was right. They were just, just a little early. That one. But now Ice moving in. They could end the game here. That tower's set to fall. TP oh, coming in. Us. One final fight to decide it all. Honor P on the back line. There's a lot of true damage on that vein. I don't know if the ult is going to keep him safe. Ooh, Yankos can't be disabled if he uses the ult. does leap for redemption going in. Whose is it, though? It is going to be the heal up for the side of Team Fire. Yankos caught up and locked down. So as Ooh, for the big play goes forward, but the team is split up. A moment of miscommunication may give Fire a chance, but it's not enough. So as moving in, Vayne grabbing the double kill. Team Ice moving dive, forward. Reckless. Do it. Oh, he got to get it. Yes, one more for the Vayne. The shutdown in the end. A triple kill to close it out for EU and Team Ice. We've been wondering, when would the vein come out? We had double if tease us a little yesterday with one of the games, and uh, we finally see Reckless on it, and nine, two, and four. He and the rest of the European squad looking a lot better than yesterday. Definitely agree. And one of the cool things, you know, about this whole event, what is obviously All-Stars, a lot about the fun, so coaches not allowed